I'm going to talk about the band Barbaric and Strasbourg Condemned IPP Sentence. I'm going to talk about men serving banned IPP sentences. Danny Weatherson, James Ward, Wayne Bell and Sean Thomas. The most alarming and disturbing human rights abuses I observed at this time in Winchester in 2016 was with short tariff, post tariff IPPs serving Strasbourg banned IPP prison sentences. The consequences also are the continued infliction of some of the worst human rights abuses ever witnessed in modern European criminal justice and political history inflicted upon short tariff IPPs and their families by successive failing Tory justice secretaries and the modern Tory British government. All short tariff IPP political prisoners of the modern British state, all IPP suicides whom are buried in coffins, all 70% of self-harming IPPs of the current 2,500 IPP prison estate enduring catastrophic, catastrophic mental health delirium, grey, gaunt, malnourished, skinny, 10 years over tariff, isolated in prison healthcare units and prison segregation units, carving chunks of flesh out of their legs, their arms, their wrists, their genitals, gouging their own eyeballs out with rusty prison razors and bleeding out in our Victorian, draconian, overcrowded slum, modern British prison system. And all ongoing and near future IPP suicides are an accepted political collateral damage in the modern British Tory government maintaining their power in Parliament. The most dangerous offenders convicted of the most serious offences are not serving IPP sentences with 15 months tariffs for the attempted robbery of a coat and a mobile phone detained now for 14 years like Danny Weatherson. IPP political prisoner Danny Weatherson sentenced to an IPP with a 15 month tariff in 2005 attempted robbery of a coat and mobile phone time served to date 14 years on the 18th of July 2019 the Chronicle Live in the northeast of England reported on Danny's plight calling his current detention nothing short of barbaric in March 2016, Danny Weatherson, enduring catastrophic mental health delirium, slashed his throat eight times in a suicide attempt for the prospect of death became his best friend for it would have delivered him from his suffering as has and continues to be the case for an ever rising IPP death toll of 140. I've met Danny Weatherson personally. Danny is a kind and good-hearted man whom in the face of such barbarous injustice and unimaginable cruelty aspires to the highest standards of grace and dignity. A grace and dignity, resolve and character that puts to shame the Tory politicians responsible for his continued indefensible suffering. During my time at HMP Winchester, I observed five IPPs sectioned to high secure hospitals to be detained indefinitely under the Mental Health Act, drugged in secret by the modern British state. At present, Rampton High Security Hospital, the population of this high secure hospital is around 300, yet around 100 or nearly a third, nearly a third of Rampton population are short tariff post tariff IPPs hidden away detained in secret most likely having new drugs trialed on them using these human beings as human guinea pigs near all of these 100 short tariff IPPs detained in secret at Rampton high secure hospital have learning difficulties 
autism, dyslexia, speech impediments, deafness and other disabilities. I am pleading with you to end the suffering of Danny Weatherson. I am pleading with you to end the suffering of Danny Weatherson's family. If you do not and will not, then I am going to spearhead the biggest and greatest campaign in global criminal justice history. If you do not and will not, then I will engage you in a new breed of surface air and sea activism of which this world has never seen before. I will coordinate modern day activists in all capital cities across the continent of Europe. I will coordinate activists across the United States of America. I will swarm the capital city of England with modern day activists. I will flood this nation's cities with a new breed of modern day activism never seen before. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. But it doesn't bend automatically. You have to pull it to bend. It is our duty as a people to pull said moral arc toward justice, for we have lost all faith in our elected British and American politicians to do such. For oppression to exist, there must be unity in oppression. Therefore, we must be unified in the resistance to oppression. 